وإذا الموؤودة سئلت بأي ذنب قتلت الله In the last time, you know, when I was teaching Surah Al-Takbir, so the verse came, وَإِذَا الْمَعُودَةُ سُؤِلَتْ بِأَيَّ ذَنْبٍ قُتِلَتْ In the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask those women who have been buried alive by their fathers, by their relatives, Allah will ask them what was their crime. So one thing very clear, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates people, He wants to give them space and time, and, you know, and they can use their abilities and their faculties and their energy and power, you know, to, to, to be something. But if somebody is created and you take out the right of in existence from that person, it is a big, big wrongdoing. But if somebody is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you make them to live, but you never make any effort for their talents to grow, never give them any space to learn and to study, to understand and think, and they never have any dignity of the life, same thing, question will be there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the male and female, men and women, so they can, you know, use this space, they can learn from this space, learn from the guidance of Allah, and they can improve themselves and become better human beings. But if you don't give them the chance, what will happen is uh, that, uh, you know, they, they don't learn, they don't have knowledge, and they will come as ignored, nothing. And, you know, many, for example, in Islam, there are many, many women, like Khadija and this and that, so they have got space, they have got, they have got you know, uh, uh, time and, and opportunity to learn, they become like that. Many, many women in our time, they would have been like, like those people, but we never provide any time, any space for them to learn, to study, and to, to, to make their Iman Islam. And they died. They couldn't do anything. So my advice, my, my, my concern basically always has been that in Muslim societies for a long time the women have got no respect. Though people don't like this word for me, but uh, the truth basically go to your house and see really, people don't respect the women. Fathers don't respect their daughters, brothers have no respect for their sisters. And all the time you can see very clearly, people have got respect only for the male children. And when they were, they were expect anything, they expect only from the male children. They expect not there, even husbands. Husbands, when they don't expect the, the wives, you know, if what they expect from the wives, something else. They don't think the wives, they can be good companions, good helpers. You can take advice from them, nothing like that. So when I started my work on muhaddathat, you know, one of my main concerns really was that this work at least will prove to the people that Islam in the past was not like that. In the past, Muslims, they really made effort to give the women all the respect that they, they, they needed. They respected them, they provided, that's why I consider the Prophet وسلم, you know, allowed the women to come to the mosque, they learned in the mosque, learned everywhere properly, and he even said, don't stop the women from coming to the mosque. And when he come to the, lead the prayer, he carries his grandson, Hassan Hussain, sometimes on his shoulder, and sometimes his granddaughter, Umar bin Tabil As. You know, treating them properly, nicely, in, in the same way, same opportunity. So that respect that Allah SWT has given you know, for, for the women in the time of the Prophet and after that for a few generations, that has gone. So my concern was that if I write that history, so at least people can remember and they can make effort to come back. And also it could be good different for Islam because many people think in the West and everywhere else that the position of Islam, women in Islam is very, very bad. So I wanted to make very clear Islam is not responsible for that. It is really Muslims. Our culture, our tradition, that's what, what had made uh, you know, very bad. And especially if you think really that, you know, with my one person's effort, and I just read the sources only once, I, I missed many, many sources, and just read, and only one discipline, hadith, and alhamdulillah, I collected the biographies of eight, around ninth, basically, now it has increased, because each time I get more information, I keep adding. It used to be at 8,500 8, women, now nearly, or maybe more than, more than 1,000, 9,000 women, just in the field of the hadith. Research of one person missing by many, many sources. And I really, really know that there are many, much more information. But I don't want to go there because I have to, I'm doing so many other things. You know, just think really, if only in the field of the hadith, in, you know, in the history of Islam, there have been more than 9,000 9, women in every part of the world. And they used to teach people hadith. 
and also give the fatwa and the teaching in the mosque of the Prophet in, in the Haram, the teaching in Makkah al Mukarramah, the teaching in Jerusalem. They used to teach in every single mosque of, of Egypt and Syria, Morocco, and also many parts of the Muslim world. And many, many learned people among the men, big Imam Ibn Asakra Damashki, Ibn Hazrat Kalani, Suyuti, Sahavi, Ibn Taymiyyah, Imam Zahabi, Mizzi, Birzali, even Abu Hanifa, Malik, Shafi'i, Ahmed al all these people, they have attended the classes of many, many women. They learned from them. It is not that women were just receivers of knowledge and no, people felt need to go and learn from them. And, agree, and Imam Abu Abdullah al-Hakim al-Nasaburi, he is very right when he said that Muslims for one quarter of the religion, they depend on the teachings of the women alone. Just think really. That's one quarter of the religion only known from them. And that's why I keep saying that no single religion in the world where women have played such an important role in the formative period of the religion, except Islam. Islam was made by the women. You can see there are many, many rulers coming from the women. Those fatwas only are with the women. If we, we, if we remove them, we will lose one quarter of the religion. Many, many ahkam about bath, about the prayer, even about the buying and selling. Many things about the divorce and the marriage. They are not known to the believers except through the female companions. They are the people who taught, the, taught, taught, taught men. You know, we should understand, and also later on, really, many, many books of the Hadith, Mu'adhi Kabir Tabrani, 25 volumes, and many books, Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, they have been transmitted and taught by the women in, you know, in so many times everywhere. And the biggest card, they come and learn from them. And I remember one thing, really, I, I always notice that the most sound copy of Sahih Bukhari always have been referred in Muslim world you know, by the name of the copy, copy of Karim al Marwaziya. Her copy of the Bukhari always have been the best one. If you, Every other copy of Bukhari, even by mail, there are some problems. The best copy of, the, of Sahih Bukhari always have been mentioned by the people to be the copy of Karim al Marwadiya female. So, you know, there is, this is really very, very rich history. The simple thing really is that my work has this, this purpose to bring the dignity and respect for the women in the society, especially in the Muslim society. And second thing really is that when women come forward, they will help the knowledge to move forward. We need, as in the past, you know, these women, they made their contribution and men have to come learn from them. In our time, if men don't do, women do more. And we can learn from them, but there are some people who say, you know, there are enough mufti among the men, why we need women? No, there are not enough mufti. It could be that some research women can do better than the men. In the past, it could be that something women can explain far in a better way than the men. We don't have enough mufti. What we have got is enough people who make fatwas. But they are not thinkers. It's not a proper fatwa. So let's you know, provide this opportunity, same as well. We don't want to change Islam. We just want to really bring Islam to the same thing as it was in the time of the Prophet. Nothing more than that.